Hey, Mech Warriors, welcome to Bad Ben's Battle Mechs. I'm Bad Ben. Today, I wanted to show something off that I didn't uh, really show off too much in the uh, main videos of my Fortress build. Fortress is over there, by the way. Doo -doo -doo. So, yeah, the pipes and industrial things uh, in this base are 3D printed and designed by a guy called the Lazy Forger. And this is six to eight millimeter scale terrain, so it fits with Battletech. It's made for uh, his own game called Full Spectrum Dominance, I believe. Uh, but, you know, it's just amazing terrain, and it can be used for everything. And anything you want, and Battletech is perfect for that. Um, yeah. So, these are... Here's a building. Uh, these are pipes. Uh, and this is how the pipes come. You get a whole bunch of pieces like this. Do, 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 see? And if you look at the ends, can we get that in focus, maybe? There's kind of um, this thingy. Do, do. Yeah, sticking out the end of the pipe. And it's really hard to see, but right beside that thingy is a little hole. And um, so what you do, you have two pieces of pipes, and they have each this little sticky-outy thing and a hole, and you just put them together like that. And they stay pretty well, you know. It's not going to come off. Uh, with a little glue, it's stuck there forever. And then you just, what you do is you build something with all the different pieces. There's like, here's a T piece, a T junction. There are um, 90 degree angles, like these ones. Uh, there are bigger ang uh, angled pieces and with less of an angle, so you can do all kinds of different shapes and thingies and in the video um i also showed painting the the fuel tanks which which are in the base and i'm not going to show off right now another thing from the lazy forger and i'll put the link a link to his website or at least a website featuring the lazy forger um on uh, in the description of this video. So this is like a little backhoe thingy. It's got a little grabber arm. Um, they're fairly tough, these things, but like that little grabber hand thing, those they're very, very thin, and they'll snap if you're not careful with them. Um, Generally, these things are pretty robust, I have to say. Uh, if you're careful with how you um, fit them together, you know, uh, for example, on this one, there's this tiny little, uh, what do you, like a, oh, you can't even see it. It's not coming into focus, but there's a tiny little, like, um, my God, thing you turn. To turn off the pipe, uh, and that'll snap off if you if you push against that uh, while you're like, you know, accidentally push it while you're trying to fit them together. Stuff like that does happen uh, if you're not careful. It happened to me a few times, but actually, it's so tiny you don't even notice if it's there. Well, if it's gone, really, uh, I broke a few little tiny tiny pieces like these little. Um, Herny thingies here. Can't even see it. Um, but generally, it's fairly robust. You can drop these things on the floor and 
expect that they won't break. Uh, let's see, I got a couple more of those. Here's another version uh, with tracks, and this comes in three pieces. So the bottom, the main body, and the um, arm, and you have to glue those together. Uh, it goes together really, they fit together perfectly. Maybe I can, uh, it fits together perfectly and glues really easily with just a bit of super glue. Come on, why don't you focus? Because I got all this other stuff in the background. Yeah. Uh, another, this cool radio antenna, which is actually now part of the base. This part, that's delicate up at the top. Um, but the level of detail on these buildings, like just look at these little tiny pipes and metal bits, the tiny doorway. I didn't paint it super well, but there's a doorway. Ooh, no, there. The l little tiny wires. Can you even see? It's very hard, just a little red flash. I should paint those better. Um, yeah, tiny wires hanging up at the top. Absolutely incredible amount of detail. Tiny little ladder, you know, going up the side of the building. The most incredible, if you're, if you really want to be crazy about detail the most can't even see it maybe if i get a flashlight on just a moment maybe so inside of that door is like where you what you drive your car onto two little pads can just barely see them. Uh, really, really difficult to see. And it's not focusing, and I can't get the light in there. It's one of those things that nobody will ever, you know, notice. Jesus. No, it's really, I'm sorry, but you can believe me, in there, in that, there are two little, um, yeah, things that you're, Car can drive up, but that's not even the most amazing thing. In this doorway, which you'll definitely not be able to see this. I'll never get that on camera. Uh, at the back of that doorway, it's so hard to see, is a shelf with things on the shelf, like on the back wall of that building, inside of here. It's very difficult to see, even for me. Uh, yeah, and the, getting the camera to focus on that is uh, nearly impossible. But believe me, the the level of detail and and otherwise, I mean this 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 railing here, um, the little tiny hoses and like a generator on the top. It's really it's really amazing. This this another hose and some. Uh, barrels of oil. I really got to paint this up well. This is, I really haven't, I've only painted a little bit of like rust on the barrel so far, but this, this one's kind of intimidating. I've seen other people paint it and it looks amazing. Um, yeah, there's the back of that building. Little tiny doorways. Oh, and I forgot to mention on these on these um, backhoes, there were also tiny dudes, um, about six millimeters tall, that came a couple with each one, and you could put them on as like gunners on the top of the backhoe. I didn't want I I these weren't going to be combat backhoes they were just going to be or excavator i should call it uh they're just going to be working in the salvage yard kind of thing it's so difficult to see them 
but you can see a guy there. And this, the little stand for his gun, uh, is just the tip of a toothpick. Uh, you know, it's just, it's... Whoa. This whole video is just me trying to get things into focus, because... It doesn't want to. Yeah. And so I just, there we go. I set those guys up. And those came with, yeah, the excavator uh, things. And I just put them in the bunkers here. And they're about six millimeters tall. They are absolutely minuscule. Quite fiddly to work with. But, um... Amazing, amazing level of detail, and the print quality is really great. I, I, I didn't get these printed by the Lazy Forger himself. I got uh, it printed at a local 3D print shop and um, here in Germany because uh, the shipping was much, much, much uh, cheaper uh, if I did that. And so big shout out to Megasonic Punch. If you are living in Germany, I'll put a link in, to their website in the description as well. Because <laughs> the 3D print quality uh, is incredible. Absolutely in like hard to describe how good these things are getting. I, for example, on this excavator here this part it's hard to see on camera but it is very clear um nothing wants to focus at this uh, distance yeah there you go you can see like the the mm, Texture on the metal bits where the guy would stand, uh, right? Where the dude would get up onto the excavator. Like, look at the little tiny wires. Just incredible. I've never seen six millimeter um, It models with this level of detail, just just for an example of how big that is, that's a Raven, which is a light mech next to it. Not well painted, <laughs> just kind of uh, quickly painted up. There's got to be a lot more detail done on him. Still not getting into focus. I'm so sorry about all this out of focus nonsense. It's really annoying, I know. Uh, yeah, just to show off the size of these things and the level of detail it's incredible 3d printing why won't that there we go the level of detail on that little excavator is mind-boggling and if they could get like max 3d printed i mean the i i don't want to i don't want to uh you know, diss the <clears throat> mechs from Catalyst Game Labs. They're great. They're they're perfect little miniatures. Uh, just the level of detail that you can expect. Uh, good for painting. Um, but on the other hand, there's that little excavator that just blows my mind. Yeah. So... Talking, talking, talking. Yeah, this one one other thing I did want to talk about. When so I just used I didn't use super glue to glue the pieces together. I used like white PVC glue. I found when the super glue dried, it would like kind of seep out of the cracks and leave this like crystally goop. And the PVC glue didn't do that. And it's easy to wipe away. You got to squeeze them together. If you're going to put them together, don't paint them before you put them together like I did here. I mean, it's not the end of the world. But 
these pieces fit together so tightly um, that just a layer of paint can make them not go into their holes very easily, and you might have to scrape a little way. So just put everything together, glue it all together, then paint it all up. Um, one, one thing that is annoying about these pipes when you um, put them together like this, and you kind of have to put them together first. I, I don't know. I, I've been thinking about if you could glue one piece on and then fit it and glue the next piece on, but I, I don't think that that's really possible. It seems um, like the only real way is to put the whole thing together, glue it all together like I've done here, and then glue it down one go. Now, there's a couple of problems with that. If you can see, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a room underneath, like this thing is going right underneath. They're not sitting on the um, ground. You can see they're raising up. Um, and that makes it a little difficult for which glue you're going to use to glue them down. And I found the best option was uh, hot glue with a glue gun because it sets quickly, um, quicker than super glue. Super glue is annoying and you have to hold it in place uh, for at least a minute, you know. Super glue is good. Maybe you have, if you can get the super glue with. Um, the activator, the spray activator, then you might have more luck with that. Problem with hot glue is you have to be quick because the glue will set pretty quickly whether or not it's on, uh, it's glued to the surface or not. So for a piece like this, you know, I would just as quickly as I could glue on all these little feet. This one would be a difficult. This would be probably the biggest one. Uh, as quick as I could with the super glue, and then go and press it down and try to make it as straight as possible on the first go, because it's going to glue down pretty quickly, and yeah, you're not going to be able to move it. PVC glue would be great because you could move it around and adjust it and get it exactly the way you want. The only problem is that is you'd have to hold it in place for like an hour. And this stuff is really bad for like putting something on to hold it down. You can't put a book on here. It's, it's really, you're going to break off pieces. It's going to, it's all wonky shapes. It's not going to sit well, not the way you want it to. So, yeah. Hot glue seemed to be the way to go with those pipes that can be a little finicky. Um, yeah. I think... Here, actually, I'll just show off a few more of the little uh, props that I made. Um, these are shipping containers. These are easy to get. Um... They're not exactly the right scale. Uh, I don't remember exactly what scale they are, uh, but two of them are a little shorter than uh, than a raven. And I just leave them loose and pile them up wherever I want. You can make different shapes out of them. You can glue. I did glue a couple together. And you can use them as different levels or cover. Uh, and these are just, you know, from a model train set. I just ordered them online from a place that sells model train stuff. And then I did a lot of weathering. So rust color, uh, a lot of black, and then dry brushing with silver in different places to make it look like the paint is wearing off. See here, yeah. 
And these are, you know, you can get these at all, any model train place almost. They're pretty common. I don't know what scale it's called. I, I know there's different ones like N scale and Z scale. And anyways, yeah, I can't. I just don't really know. What else do I have? These. <laughs> Just like some industrial coils. Um, these are from a, these are from like sewing. My wife is really into sewing, so she has like a whole bunch of these. And I asked her if I could have a few of them. And I just took some wire, crafting wire. I got it at the dollar store, wrapped it around. I, I feel like the, the wire could be weathered more. And then just painted these things black and did a dry brush with silver and those are more little props that go all together building side uh, na, 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 na. just looking for one more thing this is huh, this was this was more of an experiment but I'm I'm Fairly happy with how it turned out. I wanted to make, the idea was to make a melted, ruined looking mech. If you play like Mech Warrior 5, you'll know when, in, when you're in the mech bay afterwards um, and uh, all the armor's all melted off. So this is a Hunchback 2C. That's all melty and lost a lot of its detail. Uh, and the way I made that, I did not ruin a really a perfectly good Hunchback 2C. Uh, instead, I bought green stuff. <laughs> and I took the Hunchback 2C, uh, the actual model that I have, from a force pack or whatever. And I basically made a mold out of green stuff. I, I, I smushed some, I, I made a, like a circle of it. And then I smushed the dude into it. I, the actual model, uh, around it <laughs> onto the back and squished it into all the detail and let that dry. Then when that was done, I squished another one on top and um, yeah, let that dry. Then I had two halves of a mold, and I, you know, kneaded up a little more of the green stuff, put it into the mold, and that's what popped out. Uh, really undetailed, melty-looking mech. And then I just painted it with a bunch of black primer and rust and uh, chrome dry brushing. And that's that. And I made a couple of them. And the other one, this one, you can see he's lost an arm and a leg. Uh, and they're kind of being, like, worked on by the excavator guys here. They're taking them apart. This is, this is a torso, so I made a second one, and I cut it all up into different pieces. That's They're both Hunchback 2Cs. I didn't want to make another mold. If you don't know what green stuff is, by the way, it's like um, a two-part epoxy putty. And you get a strip of blue, and you get a strip of green. Or usually they're, they're, they're like put together. You can get it from the Army Painter. That's where I got it. Um, and then you knead it together until it turns green, and over about 24 hours, uh, maybe less, uh, it dries. So that's that's a leg, right? And here's a broken off arm. And... Yeah, this is all just extra prop stuff to give the base a little more flavor, a little more life, you know? 
And this is here. Here, there's a piece completely unpainted. Uh, you can drive over, and it's got some room for signs on it. You see, I have one on this, but I have not painted this up. This is a piece that I painted up and never ended up putting in because I didn't. I didn't really like the place that I was going to put it, so I didn't put it there. And I'm not going to put it there now, and I'm not going to glue anything on today. Gluing is stressful, and I don't want to do that on camera. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's pretty much it. Show off these two, actually. I haven't showed off. This is from a different company. I this the, what company this is from kind of confuses me. I said in the other video it was from Hexi Studios, but they're kind of just like publishers and the people that made this are called like Bitspudlo. I'll put a link to one of their to their website uh to also 3D resin printed. These things are tough as nails absolutely unbreakable i've dropped them a couple of times um, and just amazing quality the detail on these are great too i mean they they look i gotta say oh, I, they're just the little tiny oh come on there Tiny little rivets and panels. I didn't do a great job of painting these. I could have done that a little better. I could. I can always do stuff a little better. I'm kind of. I kind of rush stuff. Just tried to paint it kind of a army green color, dirty, a little bit of rust. There's the um, you know the the sight. The thing that's watching you. And yeah, these things. That's a metal plate that I have. Um, just a tiny little magnetic metal plate. And I'll show you. That is where it is sitting. If you're wondering why there's a stick in there going across, uh, it's because I dug down too deep <laughs> and um, the uh, the magnet was too far away and it didn't really uh, touch the metal pad and so I had to I just put that stick in there and then I glued it on hot glue is excellent for that there I can show that's the base so this part comes this part comes this turret comes in several pieces this was like one, two, three, four for just the turret, and then the base was five pieces. This one I put, apparently, according to my children, at too low of an angle. But I thought, you know, like it's got to be protecting the base like right next to it, you know, and shoot down in, in, in inside even if, if you want. And... Something else I didn't show off really so much in the other video was this um, industrial – was the, the, the fuel tanks and pipes all actually built in. Uh, so that's what that looks like from the top. Let's see if we can get it from the front. There's a there's a good look at them. I'm really happy with them. I think that they just turned out excellent. Really, really, really good. Very happy. And if you're wondering, what's that thing? What is that right there? Um, well, that is a mistake originally. That was a mistake because the door opening mechanism which is actually on, so that's where that is. The door mechanism, it opens the door. See, is on that side. Originally, I put it there. And due to reasons I can't explain right now and kind of forget, 
Uh, it didn't work on this side. It just, I couldn't, there was no way I could get it to work. The the door, this part was just going to fall off the wheel if I put it there. So it was a mistake. And then I thought, oh, it could be a cool, like, locking mechanism. If the door is closed, then you could put something, like, through there to lock it and have to pull it out. Uh, that was before I put in all of this cool fuel tank stuff and the locking mechanism would have totally gotten in the way and ruined everything. And I thought, Oh, I'll just cover it back up. I can take all that stuff out and, and, and just put a piece of styrofoam in there and it'll be like, there was never a hole. And I could have absolutely done that. That would have been actually no problem, but my kids, liked it for whatever reason they're like oh it's like a window and I'm like yeah it's a window to nowhere and they you can look at the door it's like an access hatch to get to the door okay so happy with that <laughs> <coughs> so i left <coughs> sorry i left that and uh that's just what that is, more of a kind of a mistake than anything. Um, and I also didn't show off that I have a lot more of these pipes just kind of smushed into the areas where there's no road and uh, just to make it look like there is stuff going on. And I have some more over here going into this building with the helipad on it, right? They're just coming out of the ground there. I just imagine that all the pipes go through the ground and then come up for whatever reason. I don't know why they wouldn't come up inside the building, but they don't because uh, it looks cooler if they don't. And then here are some more going into that building. And a couple more. Just right here, right next to the fuel tank area, going into that building. And as you can see, we actually have a game going on right now, and I should put that raven back. Uh, and this sentinel just got into its back. This sentinel is defending the base and these guys are trying to get in and download some uh, data data caches from this ruined mech that happened to be taken to the salvage yard or something like that. That was the story that we were going with. And we're in the middle of the game. We stopped it after the door got smashed down. I got to clean up all my stuff here. All my crafting stuff so that we can continue that game. Anyway, I think that's been long enough. Uh, oh, here's still one more little building that I haven't showed off and haven't painted yet either. I just, you know, did a base and kind of a dry brush as I do on everything. Um, Another amazing building. Just incredible. And, you know, this is perfect. It's got this little tank on the side. So if you wanted to just take one of these pipes and glue it on there, that would absolutely work and look awesome as well. So, yeah, the Lazy Forger. It's probably, as far as I know, the bet. Like, look at the, look at the. The destruction on the side of that. It's minuscule. This little... What's amazing about this uh, fence is that it's pretty robust. Like, I can push on it, and it bends just a little bit um, and doesn't break off immediately. It's incredible. Um, I actually did break on some of the fuel tanks... I broke some of it off intentionally just to, to, to give it more of a damage look, but I actually had to go in with cutters and, and cut that stuff out. Um, but I did that 
myself. This, these buildings, this is like, I could drop that on the ground and nothing, nothing will happen to that. Amazing. Amazing detail, amazing 3D printing quality. Yeah, I'm in awe. Anything else? I don't know. Not really. I have just... This is another thing from Bitspudlo. That's kind of like a satellite dish uplink. Uh, same company as the turrets. Um, this stuff is actually 28 millimeter scale. This is supposed to sit on top of a big tank. Um, but, you know, you can have big ones of these. Have it sitting on top of a base. So that's what I did. Yeah. All right. I think I'm done. I think I've showed off all of the cool little stuff, details and junk that went along with this base. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, hope to see you next time. Yeah. Have a good one. Bye-bye.